using common minerals, I'm able to capture the um, jitter of the zero-point energy that's the talk, hot talk of many physicists around the world. And I'm able to create uh, cells and structures similar to this one here that actually produce power for long periods of time. As you can see, we're getting a reading here of almost half an electron volt from this um, pile of um, crystals. And this is steady and has been tested up to a year's time and under stress tests also. So, which made me decide to then, of course, mount the same material in cylinders. And these cylinders here, of course, are various types of cylinders. One being an artillery shell or aluminum cylinders. Um, I could take this one here and do a reading on him. And actually, you cannot see that, but we'll try here. Can't quite really tell what we're getting. It's about half a volt, about half electron volt. And this guy here. Different cylinders, of course, there are different mixes in there, and I found that uh, that some of the cylinders are not as powerful as this material here, or this very tiny one here. Actually, this has more power than this large artillery shell unit here. And what I want to do, of course, is to um, <coughs> demonstrate it in the sense of it making actual power. That means to turn a small motor. And that can be done. I've accomplished that many, many times. We're just taking a reading here on the very small one. One cubic inch of um, raw material from the earth. It's still powering for over a year. Basically, I want to use these as replacements for batteries, which I think I can achieve. And um, to demonstrate even more so, I'm looking for a hot cylinder, which I'll call a hot one. Well, maybe be this one, which is a combination of material from this little cylinder back into here. Instead, actually, to, well, we can take a voltmeter reading on him and see if he's up the far. We get 1.635 electron volts, so I think that he's lively enough to power this little motor. We'll find out. So I'm holding this motor here. I attach a lead to the base. Get him out of the way. Okay, I'm attaching this to the base here. Another lead to the top, and it should spin, which it does. So yeah, basically, this kind of material powering motors. Of course, a very small motor at this time, but scaled up in larger amounts of, of material. can power up to uh, several horsepower if needed. But that basically is sort of the secret to the energy crisis, in my opinion, anyhow. It's using ordinary materials, non-toxic, that will interface with zero-point energy in space and time. Now we're taking a reading of one of the most powerful ones, the 1.635 volts fluctuating a bit, but uh, very steady and strong. And that was the one that powered the little motor. There's quite a host of natural, non-toxic non um, minerals in there that uh, activate. Much similar to the Moray valve of 1927, where Moray used natural minerals and got a lot of power in the range of about 5,000 watts usable power at um, 110 volts at 400 cycles per second. Long wire antenna. Using basically the same kind of principles. It's sort of a shake and bake recipe. It's extremely simple, ridiculously simple. And I do that. I simply just put it in, and heat it up, shake it around, 
and let it crystallize. And once it's crystallized, then the, it, it captures and, and conforms to the zero point energy that's around all of us. And uh, actually, I find the most simple, simplest of the recipes, the most powerful, meaning this little fellow here. Where I tried to advance the uh, st field strength or the energy, however, failing in, in a few of these cylinders, which are quite, as one would say, it would only put up milli millivolts. Um, this one here is another powerhouse unit. Being smaller, actually, they tend to get stronger. Again, it's reading about um, similar to this pile here. And again, I should take a reading on this because he's quite interesting to a lot of people. Being the smallest of them, now, that would be approximately a third of a volt. Always steady, always strong. I've used direct shorts on these kind of things together for days at a time, and they still still keep on pumping out energy. Some explanations, of course, can be found in solid state uh, physics in the old ham radio magazines when transistors were first coming out, and that will help the viewer to uh, see some of the uh, technology in those days and to the for the future, can see also the possibilities of um, what they call a space charge and junction barrier type of technologies and crystals. The interesting aspect of this technology is that these cells, crystalline cells, can be put in series and parallel to add up voltage and also add up amperage. So theoretically, if you had a room or a refrigerator full of them, you could power a lot of different types of appliances. You could you can have 110 volts if you wish, if you had them all in series, and in parallel for the amps. Plus, well, also, they'd, they cooperate with one another, going in a series and parallel. This makes them quite practical. Plus, they're very cheap to make, and they are basically from just nature's own raw minerals. If you were fascinated by the amazing technologies and concepts you've just witnessed, now you can get even more valuable information and details from the new energy series. Five full-length videos, nine hours of in-depth conversations and demonstrations of free energy systems. Explore the worlds of inventors and theoretical physicists who are changing the paradigms of science. Volume First one features to Tom physics. Bearden. In particle physics, any electrical charge is automatically a broken symmetry. Now what this means is there is a virtual photon flux, a violent flux exchange between the vacuum itself, which is filled with this virtual photon flux. Volume two, John Hutchison. I feel that that is also true. I think the Mayan connect is also a uh, coherer of frequencies and transmit them out and then lock this doorway into space and time. This motor here drew 12 and a half amps. Volume three, Joseph Newman. This motor right here only draws seven and a half amps. And look at the size of the propeller. Look at the size of the propeller. Look at the size of the motor. Look at the size of the motor. Now this is exactly what I teach throughout my book. I taught it to Dr. Hastings. I've taught it to the world. That the larger you make the mass, then the, the smaller amount of power it will take and the more power it will produce. With Volume 4 highlights type. Troy Reed. This is an old mechanical device. It's got, it's got two inner wheels on the inside and two outer shell wheels with magnets. They got eight magnets on this side, eight magnets on the inside here. Let's see what kind of torque we got at 75 PSI. And volume you five, Dennis Lee. Okay, here it goes. <laughs> Maxed it out. So it went all the way off the end of this thing, 150 foot pounds of torque. This engine They're just twenty nine ninety five for each tape. Now the process or get all here, five for uh, hundred nineteen ninety five, a savings of thirty dollars. Place your order cycle. today. Call one eight hundred seven nine five tape. T A P E.